You got to make up for this, man. I think I got, I think I got T-Mobile at the house or something crazy. Just give me a <laughs> Hey, hey, Mark, hey, Ro, when, when the power go out, you be feeling real ghetto. Like, I was like, yo, I was up in here like a, a, a cable man rebooting shit. <laughs> What's up? Well, I've got backup power. I got a generator. Oh, oh you got, oh, see there, you ready, you ready, you ready for the apocalypse. You got backup for the backup. Got, um. Like six portable power deals uh, that we use for camera shoots. Um, I got about eight of them, eight or ten of those uh, <laughs> portable packs. Hey, um, yo, they, hey, they, and you ain't the dude in the club saying, "Yo, let me can, can I can I get a bump?" You are you got backup for the backup, backup for the backup, and and I got uh, my Verizon five G uh, my five. So the internet going on the house. I got I got that. So listen, we gotta we gotta wrap. So typically, um, we do on Mondays we do like uh, Star Jones and I do this. You know, he said, she said. But since Star is not available, we gonna do the, a man talk today. And I got some really great topics I want to run by you because you always you you and Star Jones are the ones that keep me on my A game when it comes to this politics and certain issues I in the black just community. Home, so I'm gonna keep eating. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Eat. All right. The first thing off the bat, I'm going to hit you with, have you seen Judas and the Messiah? Yep. Okay. Now, I was aware of Freddie Hampton. I didn't know, like, all the intricate details. I'm sure a lot of it was left out of the movie. Obviously, you can't fit everything in there. But um, one of the things that was super disturbing to me was how the Black Panther all the good stuff that they was trying to do, they were infiltrated by one of our very own. And that just, after I watched the movie, it just it really bothered me. How, how did you feel when you saw it? Well, I spent six years in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm very familiar with the Fred Hampton story. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what went down? Met, talked to his son, numerous mm -hmm. occasions. Um, what, what we have to understand, because in fact, we just saw, um, we just saw the reading the letter on Wednesday of a, of a brother who died, who was an undercover cop for NYPD, who implicated the NYPD and the FBI in, in the assassination of Malcolm X. Wow. And that was just from Saturday. Mm. We've known that. If you watch the MLK FBI documentary, it was a phenomenal documentary. Phenomenal. What's the name of what's the name of the documentary? It's called MLK slash FBI. Okay. Uh, phenomenal documentary. And again, a lot of stuff that we've known. Um, and then if you look at obviously the history of COINTELPRO, I got a documentary around here on that. But you got COINTELPRO. The, the whole goal of Jacob Hoover was to take out black leadership. I mean, that was the, so that scene in Judas and the Black Messiah, that was, that's, that's, I'm saying real. I mean, he, they, they, their deal is, yo, yo, we taking all these folks out. Period. Uh, it, you know, the, the taping of MLK, mm -hmm. the, uh, sending him a letter telling him to commit suicide. Um, they, you know, black folks, scared these cats to death because it's all about black liberation. Then that thing goes deeper, man, where you start like, okay, remember the, remember the photo from the Rain Motel from the balcony? Yes. 
Well, one of the cats in that photo who's kneeling down, who's at, at the head of King, mm -hmm. was an undercover CIA, uh, was an undercover FBI dude. In fact, in the MLK FBI documentary, they asked Ambassador Andrew Young about a specific person who was an informant who was in SCLC. They mentioned the person's name. Young says, I'm not going to talk about so-and-so. Um, then you have the famous black photographer out of Memphis who shot all the historic civil rights photos. Mm -hmm. The FBI informant. See, so, the, so, so, wow. see, so, so the deal is they were, so the William O'Neill piece, they were looking for the end. They looking for the end. And so, so here you are talking about MLK, one of the people who was, one of the people who was inside of his um, um, group. Yeah, they had formants all over the place. Because you had, what they, they would threaten you, same thing with William O'Neill. I'm not making excuses. What I'm saying is, they, did they sell black people out? Absolutely. Did they sell past information on to the FBI? Absolutely. But that's what they did. That was their whole MO. Their whole MO was to spy on black people uh, to, and they would use anything possible. And so, you know, and, and see, imagine, imagine the information that was destroyed. I can, I, oh, I mean, I, it's got to be catastrophic because, yeah. um, you know, a lot of things are being revealed 30, 40 years later that if they could have helped it, they would not want it to, you know, get out. But, you know, certain people, you know, certain things people have done, you know, they just can't rock with it no more. You know, maybe they at some point, you know, they don't feel like they have anything to lose and they come forward and they, you know, they give us the details that we've been yearning for or had in our in our hearts and minds anyway. But it's just really crazy because um, I, I just was like, I watched it late um, and I couldn't go back to sleep because mm -hmm. I just thought that uh, Fred Hampton was such a brilliant guy. And just the basis of the things that he was trying to do to me was per perfect. It was empowering to the black community. It held us accountable. But, we but were that's taking what threatened him. See? Right, yeah, right. Like, yeah. I don't... America has always been, America has always been threatened by blackness, threatened by, and the whole deal was to, is, was, to grow, was to grow dissension. If you start thinking back to a lot of the stuff that happened, I mean, see, what then happens is you start thinking back to what stuff that's happened over the, over the decades to go, well, hell, was that legitimate beef or was that all... FBI informant driven. Correct. It was all, it was all designed to tear up and tear down organizations. So the lies. So when you know when you know in that part in the movie where they talked about the flyer that was distributed, man, FBI did this shit all the time. They that their blackness has always scared this country, right? Because this country has never been wanted to be about. Um, Wanted to be about the truth. To wanted to be about um, uh, uh, freedom. So America's always has always made it clear that they were going to uh, do um, do what they do. So so moving forward, right? Where now you know we got a new administration, and you know things things are tight. People, you know. Um, got their backs against the wall trying to get things done still got to go through the house still got to go through all that voting stuff um is it is there any um i i believe we should keep our foot on everybody neck the pressure was real how we got here i think we should just keep the pressure on um biden and harris to you know accomplish some of the things that got them elected what, what oh absolutely uh I, I constantly say that our responsibility is that the election is, is the end of one process, the beginning of another. Mm -hmm. And so after 
you work to get somebody elected, then you got to work to make sure they do what you want them to do. Um, <clears throat> so black folks uh, need to be doing all they can to push these Democratic senators for the George Floyd Justice Act, to push these folks for the John Lewis Voting Act. Uh, see, it, well, people don't understand nothing happens by happenstance. It just don't. But black right. people, the history of black people in America, we've never gotten anything. Without a fight. <laughs> right, without a fight. I mean, just, I mean so I'm trying everything to figure out. Is, everything we got to knuckle up think, for. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen now. No. No. You got to no. press these people on $15 an hour living wage. I mean, that, right. that, that's what that's that's what other folks do. And so people just don't understand. They just don't understand that this is what we are to do. We've got to keep that pressure on pushing them, pushing them and and, and using our power and, and letting them know that we expect you to do this. I mean, look, I, I tweeted the other day. If. The Democrats don't get if the Democrats in the Senate don't get rid of the filibuster to pass a real voting reform law to combat right. what the Republicans are doing in these states. We should be prepared to drop a hundred thousand black people on Capitol Hill. No, not on Saturday when they right. all went home. Right, a hundred thousand on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Say, we're going right. to gonna hit every U.S. senator's office. We're going to hit every... It's like, who, it's like, yo, who are the Democrats who are against who are against uh, into the filibuster? We're going to hit them. Diane Feinstein of California, Christian Sienna of Arizona, Joe Manchin of West Virginia. We're going to hit all of them. All of them. And, and and then I then I need people to understand also, you know how things work. So for the person who who posted, well, fifteen dollars in a living wage. First of all, to that to that individual, who clearly don't know shit about the rally. In nineteen sixty three, right. the minimum wage was a dollar and twenty five cents. Mm -hmm. Today, the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty five cents. Okay, it's gone up six dollars in fifty eight years. So if we are successful getting it pushed to 15, that means it will go from 725 to 15. That means in less than a year, you will have increased it higher in the last 58 years. See, so right. what we need are folks who say, well, that ain't this. Well, hell, guess what? It's 725 right now. And I can guarantee you, if your ass is at minimum wage, you will be more than happy making $15 an hour that you are making seven twenty five an hour. All right. So get this. So being the devil's advocate, people um, that have you know smaller businesses, maybe not as big as built, uh, businesses that can actually do it. Do you think there is going to be a plus minus with raising the, the minimum wage to fifteen dollars or making it mandatory? There could be. Right, because I I think I think that. But um, the plus minus, but but the, but the minus right now is, you can't get quality people at that number you can't at the, at, at the 725 you ain't you ain't you ain't getting nobody quality at that and and the other thing is you now they are now susceptible health issues mm -hmm. transportation issues if i'm all of a sudden let's just say if i'm all of a sudden full-time job 40 hours a week right and you just gotta do about just at seven dollars and 25 cents yo that's 290 dollars a week Times forty-eight pay periods, that's thirteen thousand nine hundred. That means that person is making thirteen thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars a year, working forty hours a week. If that person all of a sudden goes forty hours at fifteen dollars a week, at, six, at fifteen dollars an hour, at six hundred dollars times forty-eight pay period, that's twenty-eight thousand eight hundred. I mean, you, you changed their life that. tremendously. Yeah, you changed their life tremendously. Obviously. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I just I was just um, having this discussion this um, past weekend. You know, um, you know, I have friends like you have friends that have businesses, and you know the the big the big complaint is that they shouldn't be forced 
certain people should make $15 an hour. Certain people have to earn $15 an hour. Everyone shouldn't just get $15 an hour. And that was sort of like roughly the, the discussion. And I was kind of like, well, you know, $15 an hour would mean a lot to certain people. But then once again, what about the person um, who just earned his way up to $15 an hour or 1850 or whatever? And then this person who's a new person is going to just jump to 15. Do you think that's fair? It don't matter. That ain't no different. That, that ain't no different than you have you paying somebody forty thousand dollars, and your revenue grows, and now you can hire another person, and you hire them at forty thousand, and they go, "Well, I, I well I've been here. Well, yeah, you've been here. Okay. I mean, that that person being here, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it just doesn't matter. Well, I, I mean, I'm all for it. I, I, I honestly, I mean, my first job, I remember, I made, I think it was five seventy five. Right. I mean, you know, if, if, so I remember, if, it was like, see, I was, if, I was think 16. about it, you were sixteen. Imagine yeah. being a grown person with three kids at seven twenty five. It's a lot of it's a lot of cussing going on in that house, and one yeah, of them kids, one of them kids ain't eating, and that's real, and that's just real. You know what I'm saying? And and and. I don't know, and I was going to call you so, you know, everything happens for a reason because I was like, I don't know economically how the company, how the country gets back on its feet because we got so many stumbling blocks. The, the coronavirus uh, thing just kind of just, just took us out the loop. That was something we can't account for. So um, you can't account for that, but mm -mm. <clears throat> We experienced this 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Spanish flu. We've had natural disasters. We've had other calamities. Mm -hmm. We've always dealt with those. You actually, I mean, hell, mm -hmm. we didn't have coronavirus, but the economy was in worse shape in 2009 than it is today. Without without Corona, we were losing five hundred thousand jobs a month. Why? What was going on back then? I don't remember two thousand nine. Housing crisis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Home foreclosure crisis. Stock stock market went down below eight thousand. Black unemployment went to sixteen percent. That's official black unemployment. We ain't talking about unofficial. <laughs> you said we not talking about unofficial. He's like, that's what we can count. That's not what we really know. Wow, well, that's deep. That's deep. The economic crisis. Mm -hmm. it, see, if you look at the numbers right now, mm -hmm. more people are employed right now than were we in 2009. 2009 was crazy. The, pro the reason this feels different, we can't go anywhere. Right. We, can't, we can't do the things we like um, and all kind of stuff like that. I mean, th that's, that's really right now what, what, what the whole deal is. What the real difference is. And the other I thing is it's here. The other thing is it's here. You got to realize, um, so many people, so many people, um, you look at what's happening right now. So many people are are caught in this. Oh my God, um, we can't go um, in, into places. But the reality is, um, this has changed in many ways our economy because now it is forcing is forced people. Um, it's forced people to now accept folks who work from home. Correct. Right before they fought it. Oh, productivity is going to dry up. We come out of coronavirus? Bruh, there's a lot of people who are not going back. It's a lot of people who are not going back uh, to work. Right. They're, they're, there's a lot not, of people who are not. And so retail space, office space, will be available, bro. I was just having this conversation. They were saying that um 
the commercial fifty five dollars an hour are now uh, negotiating thirty five dollars an hour. Keep keep talking. I got some dumbass over here. I'm about to I'm about to block. But keep going. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So real real quick, um, one of the conversation was saying that the commercial real estate market is going to tank because um, just what you said, people are not going to go back. It's not going to be cost effective for them to bring back all those office spaces. People are going to actually, in a lot of companies, productivity went up during this time. People are able to work more comfortably. They don't have to be in traffic. There's a lot of little um, sort of variables that win for companies yep. keeping you at home now. Are they going to keep the same amount of staff? Nah, I don't think so. Because it's always well, about right. the numbers. Yeah, all, that's what I'm saying. All of that, all, all of these things, all of these things that people assume before uh, are now about to change. And now, because it was like, oh, we, we, we like, we, we, we couldn't do these things. Now, you know, choice. I mean, look at churches. The coronavirus forced a lot of churches who were not trying to do digital. I'm not trying to go there. I don't care. Now, all of a sudden, they got no choice. Yeah. Now, all of a yeah. sudden, yeah. now, they were already getting away from building large, large churches. Dude, that's mm -hmm. gone. That's cool. gone. Yeah. That's gone. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm blessed because um, we starting to get back rolling in Hollywood. We obviously right. have some stringent protocol when it comes to yep. work now. Where you you get, I mean, I just got tested again today. Like you got to get tested every freaking forty eight hours, right? Yeah. Then um, you can't go nowhere. Don't think you can go back home, go see mom and do this, and then come back to work. Oh no. So once you get a job now, um, you're pretty much in a bubble. Um, we also, too, will people go back to the certain ways of entertainment? Like for now, comedy is still rocking. People want to laugh. They need to get out. So comedy is winning. Now, Does is the movie theater thing going to go back? I don't know. Oh, here we go. It's all going to come back by 2025. No, seriously, we've got we've got to start thinking and stop. Look, last year, March, April, folks like, yeah, I, you know, shit, we'd be good August. And I was like, August who? <laughs> August <laughs> what? I said, not Bro, August twenty twenty. You might it might like, be twenty. Then they were like. What you what you think? I said not August twenty twenty one. They were like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Hell yes, I'm serious, dude." I said when Essence got canceled last year, I said, "Ain't gonna be no Essence in twenty one." I said, "Y'all, you're gonna have to." Biden has said by July there will be a vaccine shot for every American. That means that you're gonna have to give another year before cats are comfortable. You're going to have to see, we just hit 500,000 COVID deaths. You're going to have to see, you're going to have to see new cases drop to like 10. Not 1,000 a day. Well, it's not that's 500, be, not 750. It's going to have to be like 10 for the whole city. Listen, the problem is and, and nobody's on the same page. I just left Florida, and it, it looked like it was 2018. I know. They, they that's, the hard, that's, that's the hard part. You they have a hard man. Folks. They're not even thinking about it. Like, they're living their life. Like, you go to you go to Texas. They was living their life before, the you know, the ice freeze or whatever. Let me tell you something. Everybody living their life till they ass get it. Right, it's all good until you get sick, right? <laughs> that was a Duke in Texas. Man, fuck this. Had a barbecue. 20 family members. 12 got COVID. Six died. That son bitch was in the hospital. I didn't think it was real. I didn't think it was. 
Hey, Ice T posted. Ice T father in law. What up, Gerald Albright? Ice T father in law. Ah, it's a hoax. It's fake. Okay. That motherfucker was laid up in the hospital on a ventilator. And he and Ice T took a picture. He's like, yeah, that shit real now. See, that's the, <laughs> see Man, people ask I don't mean that. to laugh, but it's true, man. I don't understand. I feel like an old man being scared or whatever. But I'm just walking around with my mask on and stuff, and other people just walking and talking Bruh. and doing whatever. I'm like, what? Let me tell you something. Dude jumped on my page the other day. I flew St. Louis on Thursday. Mm -hmm. What about yesterday? I had goggles, two masks, gloves. Now, I got a hazmat suit as well now. Okay. So, I got pulled up a hazmat seat. You know, so, play. dude gonna sit here. Man, it don't take all that. I am be wearing no mask. I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Man, look. I'm not sitting here playing around with these people. No. What what are you what are your thoughts on, you know, um being on the list uh for the vaccine because I heard uh I had some friends uh, who had the ass vaccine on that list. Right. Yeah, I, I know some friends that had the first shot already. And uh and some of them got the second one and you know, but they had to get on the list of some sort. Right. It, it's not like it's not like readily available to everybody like you think. Hey. Again, all these people who talking about, man, that shit ain't nothing. Look, there ain't no flip side to death. <laughs> it's over. It's done. Ain't no vacation. <laughs> there ain't no, ain't no plan B of death. Death is it what it is. Bam, it's done. What we doing? We, 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 That's it. And you can't That's go it. back and fix it, bro. Somebody else spitting in your shit. Um, they they sitting here, putting your shit up for auction, mm -hmm. giving your stuff away. Back. It's not. The people who get it. My next door neighbor. He's saying, "Oh yeah, man. Uh, yeah, everybody in my house got it. Wasn't that bad?" I was like, "You white." <laughs> Hold on one second. You stupid. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I told him, I said, you white. I said, that shit ain't been good for black people. <laughs> shit ain't good. He was like, no, you know, it wasn't that bad. I said, I ain't trying to test it. Right, 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 right. How, how many dudes back in the day said, ah, oh, shit, man, BD ain't that bad. <laughs> Bitch, I ain't trying to burn. I know, man, this is, but it's it's unbelievable, you know, living in California, which I believe, you know, it's probably one of the more stricter states. And then you go to another state like Georgia, you go to Florida, you go to Texas, and it's completely different, bro. It's unbelievable. What what state you in, bro? I'm in Virginia. So are they are they strict? Somewhat. Um I was in St. Louis. I'm in Atlanta tomorrow. Tuskegee, Alabama on Wednesday. Jacksonville on Thursday. So but here's moving. the thing. I don't give a shit about everybody else. I ain't never succumbed to peer pressure. Right. I ain't. <laughs> man. you like, I'm good, man. Hey, listen, I'm with you, bro. I, uh, Dude, I've I was been traveling as well. I was in Atlanta, and I was there covering the Georgia runoff race. Homegirl of mine, she says, hey, you're in town. Let's go dinner. All right, so it was some spot. I, I walked in, I was like, like, you motherfuckers don't wear masks? Man, cats was walking around, chilling and shit. They all, That's what like, I'm saying. Bruh, I'm goggled, too mad. First of all, then the cigar bar. I'm already pissed. I'm, a, I'm allergic to smoke. Right. I go to the car. I get another. I get another mask. Put a second filter in it. So I got like two masks, three filters total. So 
dude, dude, dude walk up to me. Your role, your role, man. Now, nah, I really appreciate your work. No goddamn hand ain't stopping shit. <laughs> man, I'm in, a, I'm in an airport. I see this white woman. <laughs> Dog, this is no lie. This is no lie. Let me see. Oh, oh, let me get this here. <laughs> she had, she had this. She, this is how stupid this shit is. Go ahead, go ahead. She had a mouth guard. Okay. She had a mouth guard. Not covering her eyes, no mask. Okay. Imagine this is the mouth guard. Okay. Okay. Now the mask <laughs> covers your mouth. Okay. Mask covers your mouth. Right. Why her shit was extended out to here? Why? It went up. It went up just past her lip, but it was extended out to here. I'm on the train like... <laughs> I know you was like, you can't be serious. <laughs> that shit ain't covered up nothing. She talking, and I'm looking at her like, so... <laughs> you just think your particles are only going this way. In the cup, in the cup. Yeah, dude, I'm thing. seeing these people, and I'm just like, I, I, like, what are y'all doing, y dog? Yeah, yeah, that's not. It wasn't, that's a. It wasn't like an oxygen mask, bro. Her shit was like right here, and I'm looking at her going, "That ain't stopping nothing, bro." Then, I mean, then, then what gets me? Mm -hmm. All the people who. Don't want to use no hand sanitizer. You already know they ain't washed their hands when they went to go pee anyway. Anyway. So they damn sure ain't doing it now. So then here's the one that I don't get. Maybe y'all can help me. <laughs> Roland, how you have all these utilities in your house? <laughs> I, I need the person to go who across the room, they go, hey, Roland, let me holler at you. And they get right here, they go, see, man, what I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> that's the point of the man. <laughs> Roland, stop. Dude. Stop. <laughs> when I was in Georgia, man, these folks were sitting here. And I was doing a radio interview, and she was sitting there, she had the microphone, and she was talking, and she's right. like, they, 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 she goes, uh, folks, uh, right now, uh, we have uh, the great Roland Martin. She's like, so Roland, let me ask you, I'm like, hey, put it back on. Put it on. You, you got to come up with put it on t-shirt. <laughs> she's standing right next to me. I'm like, I'm like, can you explain to me the point of wearing it? When you away from me, Rolling, man. but right you... next to me, <laughs> you take it off because <laughs> they want you to see this. Then, bro, dog. <laughs> okay, how about this here? Okay, dude, we take a selfie. Okay, we take okay. a selfie. I'm like, mask on. I was like, all right, count to three. One, dude, next to me. Man, I really love that. I said, stop talking. You spreading particles. Right. Because I go, we go one, two, then I go three, back on. Right. He talking. I'm like, I said, I need you to shut up. Right. When you talk, you're spreading particles. Yes, you are. I said, but if you're not talking and just smiling, we can quickly take it off, put it. So now, <laughs> so have, now, now do, you, do you know how to do the selfie? The so, no. do you know how to do the COVID social distancing? I haven't selfie? been. To, I haven't been. I haven't been taking no. I haven't been taking. Okay, no all right. Like you can, you, Bill, you can take selfies with a stick. No, 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 no. How this you doing what, it? This is what you do. They right here. They right here. If you you tell put that camera in a left hand, that's them right here. Mm -hmm. This is you. 
Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. You say, anybody want to do selfies? Well, after your comment show, you say, we're going to do selfies. Y'all stand up there. <laughs> I'm back here. Hold your camera up. Click. It's the same thing. It's going to look the same. It's the same. Whether I'm what about, what, right what, 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 about, what about the people that come up to me and say, take your mask off so I can show people it's you? I say, you know what? No, no, you no, won't no. have to. Here's the deal. This real simple. Tell them, stand your ass right here. I'm going to be further back. <laughs> and I'm going to go. <laughs> hey, Roland. It's Roland, me. You, Roland, you ain't, hey, yo, you ain't no fool, bro. You out here trying to live, bro. I appreciate you. I appreciate it's me. <laughs> I'm going to stand eight feet back. And see, here's the deal. If they what? talking, the spin is going that direction. Right. It's not even on you. It's on they don't. And let them use their phone so they spit don't be on your phone. I'm there back you here. You're back there. I got you. So you, gotta that's a, you, that's a, so you say, selfie <laughs> line up there. <laughs> Roll it. How much it cost you for your, your hazmat suit? I'm gonna have to get one. What would you get? Oh, I, got, Amazon I, got that off, uh, I got that off uh, Amazon. <laughs> it came in a two pack. Dog, I was, when I went, I, I, the first time I flew was, uh, oh, God, the first time I flew boy. was October to vote. And uh, so my parents, 73, I didn't want, you know, anything to happen. I said, so I'm gonna put, the, dude, I had the suit on. Right. I had the whole thing. And it you know, came down <laughs> here. Had to do. I had the mat. I had the goggles. I had the gloves. They no, got the I shields now. I seen the shields. No, I can't. I, I don't like the shield. Cause the no. problem. I don't like the shield. Cause one, I wear baseball caps. Like you got the hat right there. And the mm. problem is the shield. Like the ones I have, it, 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 it in your head. It hits up here, and then when you pull a hat down, it's like pressing down into you. So okay. I got. I don't, well, I'm wear, hold up. Then here. So I got man, I got um, I got these great goggles. Uh, they look like glasses. They, they, they end them like them. Oh, remember them goggles we had in science class? Them big ass. Right, right, look right, like, right. Look right. like this. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, <laughs> no, I can't do that. Them you big look ass like goggles. Herbal. You look like Can't way out here. <laughs> I mean, look like binoculars. You were wearing. Yes. Then shit, you be sweating your fucking forehead. Be sweat, sweat. Yeah, like all that, we here. we all had those in science class for real, for real. Hey, what what you what you working on, man? I got some good stuff I'm doing too, man. I uh, I did this movie called A Rich Christmas. It's gonna come out in November. Uh, it's oh, like a holiday stop, can turn. We stop, can we stop right there? Yes, sir. I, you know, I just want I just want to know. Um, <laughs> and this, I'm just being real. I'm just trying. How many fucking Christmas movies can we make? You got to make the right one. I th no, no, no. You... There's no such thing as the right one. There yes, have been, is. in the last two years, mm -hmm. 796 Christmas movies made. Right. Every damn network is making a Christmas movie. You got to have Christmas it, movies. It's it used to people be... sitting around and feeling good about life and love. Come on, no, bro. You know you want to be What happened movie. to watching a movie on <laughs> Christmas? How, Just what, what happened right. to watching? No, no. But why does it have to be a Christmas movie? And it's the same shit. Dude run into a woman at the store. <laughs> she focused on her career. Right. He's interested. He hmm. came out of a bad relationship or Correct. his fiance died. He not okay. looking for love. Then okay. all of a sudden, he's looking for the right gift for his mama. Then he meets her. She helps him find the gift. Then she's scheduled to leave town in two weeks. But they fall in love. So now the conundrum, do she stay? Or does he follow her? That's every fucking Christmas movie. That's my movie, no. <laughs> every Christmas movie. The Christmas <laughs> movies used to start the week of Christmas. Right. Then that shit went to December first. Now we watch it. Then we did Christmas movie with the Thanksgiving. <laughs> now Christmas movies. Uh, first of all, Christmas movies fell back to Halloween. If I see a fucking Christmas movie start on Labor Day, I'm cussing somebody out. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, that's too much. That's 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 too much pressure, bro. 
That's it's just, it's, and everybody got Christmas movie. Like there aren't that many Christmas stories. Right. Like right. I, I like every I'm like every network, every single network. <laughs> Like but Roland, what if it's a we, regular movie that's happening to be up. around Christmas? I, I is that better? Huh? Is it better if it's a regular movie, but it's just during the holiday? Fine. Oh. G- give me that. Yeah. Can I? Can but I do that? But it's like, no. Let me tell you something. My parents they came here. They were not here in 2020. They came here in 2019. My mama watched all them damn Christmas movies. Correct. I text her. I said. You can't watch no Christmas movies on any of the TV 65 inch or higher. Right, right, right. Okay? <laughs> I told my mama, I said, there's a 50 inch TV that's set up in the kitchen with the Hallmark app on it. I have some head Bluetooth headphones. You can sit there at the table and, and go, have, get it and get it. Fine. Guess what? You are out of the way. You're not block. You're not with the 65 inch upstairs. You're not with the 82 inch downstairs. I said you could just sit. I said, and if I tell my my, my my brothers and sisters and my nieces and nephews, if y'all want to join your grandmama, all y'all can sit y'all asses in the kitchen. I I have given y'all a Christmas movie damn TV. And get away from me and let me watch my football. <laughs> I, I, I won't watch anything. I want to watch. I want to watch uh, a stripper movie that's not doing Christmas. I want to watch. Uh, I want to watch uh, uh, John Wick kill four hundred and sixty-eight people, and all he does is kill. And people say, "Oh, this is a great John Wick movie." It was the same as the last two. He killed right. people. The body count people. just went higher. I'm just, right. I'm just, I'm just, I can't, man. I can't. That, where, where can people see you, man? Tell people what's going on with you, man. You you're always... not gonna see me in a fucking Christmas movie. That's what you're not gonna that's... see. <laughs> You stupid man! <laughs> hey, you got to come on and do my podcast, man. You know what? Let's I'll, talk about that. Yeah, uh, I want, I want, I want to pick your brain. I want you, you know. Oh, well, I gotta ask you, you. You get people go. come up to you. I know they do because they do it to me. How? Before I go to the podcast, let me ask you this here. Because like right now, okay, mm-hmm. right now there's a there are six hundred and sixty eight people. It was a little bit ago. It was more than seven hundred. Mm-hmm. Bill, just I just want you to share your thoughts with me. Do you feel kind of sideways when somebody asks you to come do my IG show? My mm. Instagram show? No, no, yeah. Well, it depends on who and it then is. Then when you go back and watch some of some some of the Instagram shows and they garbage and it's don't do 278 it. total views. <laughs> You can't do it, bro. No, I'm just. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean. I'm honest. I'm honest. Do you, with pop, you. Do you pop into different people's IG? Yeah, I gotta go, see how you moving. I gotta see how you moving. If you got and 18 there are only views, eleven people watching. Nah. And and you tell yourself, I could brush my teeth and get eighty. That many watch. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. Do you? I'm, I don't know. Bro, I don't know bro, you bro, bro. You're not being bougie. You're just being super real. <laughs> Are you gonna give thirty minutes of your time, uh, Bill Bellamy's time, <laughs> for eleven total people? Do you know how many 11. people in the world, and only eleven people care enough? No, and he's not doing it, bro. Here's what it even means. It even means because the way Instagram works, you bring your followers and you join. Your followers, like, I ain't trying to hear this motherfucker. <laughs> You know Uh-oh. you can bring more than eleven. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Just, but I mean, see, the thing about this, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen with this right here. The people that's tuning in now is just the six, seven hundred, eight hundred people, whatever it is. But by tomorrow, that's my point. Because you in here acting the fool, Roland. If you have you, 116 total views from a video <laughs> three weeks ago. First of all, you're not supposed to be on Instagram. <laughs> look, look, I keep telling people, stop calling this a show. Listen, yeah. a show means you have a show intro. You have a theme song. Good. You got 
Chiron Credits. Yes. That's a show. It's a show. If yo, me and you right now are not on Bill Bellamy's show. No, we, we are having talk. conversation. We just talk. What kills me is when they send me emails, Roland, I will, uh, can you come to my Instagram show? I click, motherfucker, you ain't got a show? You just going live. Roland, what did you have to eat, man? No, you man, on, I'm just, you know, bro, what was it? What was it? What was in that sandwich, bro? I had crab you cake. rolling? No, it's just, and it's like you ain't trying to be mean, but you like. It was eleven people <laughs> watching. Yo, you gonna have to start doing stand up. Keep it up. Keep no, it up. I just, I just keep, keep. Yo, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you. When you tell the truth, you are utterly. Hysterical, bro. Eleven people. You like this? The shit that kills me. I want to do you for an hour. No, not motherfucker, not for eleven people. <laughs> <laughs> they think you got hour, all. Bill. Hey, Roland. They think you got all that fro free time. I don't think so. Bro, I don't think so, that's man. An hour. Eleven <laughs> people. <laughs> then, I'm gonna repost this. Listen, listen. I'm not gonna keep you all night. <laughs> But I promise you, bro, you made my night. My Wi-Fi wasn't working for 40 minutes, and then I popped up in your head. Your big-ass head was right there, and you took me to the promised land. So everybody out here, follow Roland Martin. He is one of the realest, smartest, real sandwich-eating brothers. I have never, ever had a sandwich with you before. And we... <laughs> Let me think. No, 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 no. Uh, Bill, Bill. What's up? <laughs> You gotta tell them about New Orleans. What was that? What part? Bill, you forgot? We were there for that TV one shit. We ran to that black, that drunk black couple, and the dude started showing us phones. And he, remember, his wife would have some, she had some photos of in her panties and bra. <laughs> I forgot what happened. Okay, y'all. Okay, okay, y'all. Y'all, okay. Seriously, this is a true story. This is 100%. Okay. True. I, just like when Bill told y'all that story, when LL Cooley stepped the shit out of Jamie Foxx, oh my God, that shit was funny. Okay. Y'all, we are in New Orleans for an okay. event for TV One. So, we, we meet downstairs in the hotel for dinner. TV One got dinner. So, I could be like, all right, all right what up, Bill? We talking shit. So, we eating dinner and everything. So, y'all, dinner, um, dinner, uh, dinner over. So, me and Bill going to the elevator. We run this black couple. Oh my God. Oh, Rose Mud. Oh, Bill Bellamy. Man, we just sitting there talking to shit. Y'all, they drunk as hell. They okay, drunk as hell. Man, we love y'all. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the brother's like, man, let me show you this photo. He going through his phone. There's some phones, there's some pictures of him and his wife they took in the damn hotel room. She in her bra and panties. Mm -hmm. and he's like, Oh shit, fuck that. Uh, the dumb my wife, my goddamn bra and panties, y'all. And uh, yo, it's about 20 of them photos. And me and Bill like we, we, we was like, oh my God. And he he was like, oh yeah, fuck it. Baby, they don't want to see your ass in goddamn bra. You big kitty ass in bra and panties. I don't want to see your ass in that shit. Come on, here, get to the photo. <laughs> and Bill was like, we can't go nowhere. Cause he's gonna in the elevator this photo. Yo, and we trapped in the elevator with the food. Y'all. He was like, yeah, I might want to see your big ass in the goddamn bra and panties. Look at your ass. They were drunk. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not lying. That's the, thing, that's the thing that happens to us when I tell these stories. People be think I'm making them up. They just don't understand when it happens to us. We can't believe it either. No, we can't no, true, believe okay. it either. I'm, I, okay, I got to give, give you one more. Say it the entertainment. Say it. We'll confirm this. We're going to the Jeffrey Osborne Golf Tournament. Straight up. We land in Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut, one of the white states, okay? So we let, we at the airport, and the sister's like, oh my God, oh my God, Roland Martin. She's like, I watch, I love you. Now mind you, we're standing there. It's me, my production dude, uh, Henry Peterson, and Sid. Right. And sh she goes, Sid got on his hat and shades. She goes, you look familiar. <laughs> this is her to say it. You look familiar. Never mind. So she goes back. Right. 
She goes back, <laughs> talking to me. Says right. <laughs> okay. So she's talking about, have you ever had, have you ever considered having somebody on who was the who was who was the, who was gonna be aborted, but then the mama told to have them? Uh that's that, that's who I am. So she started talking, I was like, uh yeah, we actually had that on before. She's like, right. okay, she, uh, well, I just really love your show. You know, can we get a photo? I'm like, oh, can we get a photo? She goes, Can you take this? <laughs> She get the camera, and I'm like, oh no, no, hold on, baby, hold on, I got the, the, the I got it. Come on, just give me the camera. I take the selfie, give me the camera. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> say, say, like, shit. Say, go, shit. I, I guess this damn disguise works. <laughs> <laughs> she literally went. She heard said feelings, man. She made, she made said an assistant for you. That's what happened. She went. You look for me. Never mind. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something, man. I miss you, man. Please, anytime you want me to come on your little show with 11 views, I'm coming. See, look and at me. Say, Lil. Lil, Lil. Lil. look. See, your little everybody, show. Every, to everybody watching, if you want to diminish the fuck out of somebody, if you want to make them feel small, right. you say, Lil. <laughs> you do that. That's what I did. Amen. That's what I did to my wife. No, no. When I when I met when, when, at church, when I met, dude, I ain't like her. I ain't like her. She asked me to edit some project. She said, "Well, I talked to Pastor West, and he said you were the best person in the church to edit something." I was like, "Yeah, he. That's true. He not lying." <laughs> <laughs> and so, so she 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 handed me the sheet of paper. Bill, I started marking this. I had the blood of Jesus on that paper. It was red pen. That paper was bleeding. I'm like, "Hey, here you go." So the next week, I said, hey, how, how your little project going? <laughs> Man, your wife, but you better, you're going to get high grits. You keep talking. Well, no, she walking down there. Get... I said, how your little project going? Boy, I got to go, man. Say, no, oh, I know. Say. I didn't tell him that story. No. <laughs> what she talking about is the butt story. He's a trip. I'm sorry. Uh, is he... I didn't hear that, Bill. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he out here talking reckless, eating sandwiches. I'm not talking eating. reckless. I told this story to Bishop T.D. Jakes on TBN. God is my witness. No, that was the governor of Illinois. I told the story. <laughs> I did. Bill, I got... Hey. We have fun hey. in this house. We don't care. Bill, straight up. Uh, you what need... Bill, okay, what's the first thing attracted you to your wife? First thing. First thing, don't lie. Uh, let me see. Her eyes. A smile. <laughs> That's a bullshit. Well, she was sitting down. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Okay. okay. There you go. Okay, all right. I'll give you that one. Bill, yeah, I was talking. I'm always you keeping with, 100. Bill, no lie. Bill, no lie. I did not want somebody to see the ass. I was no lie. I would be with Bill. When I said this is no lie, God is my witness. We were in church. We were not in the church sanctuary. We were in the we church for you. For you. In the church for you. Mm hmm. Some of you Negroes who don't know what a foyer is, that's also known as the lobby. So we were in the, <laughs> we were in the church foyer. So Bill, I'm talking to my frat brother, Carrie. Mm. She down on the other end in the church foyer. We had a singles party that weekend. They were like going over uh -huh. some stuff. And he was talking to me and I was like, damn, Karen. Okay. You know, Jackie got an ass on her. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, in the love. Hey, hey, you know that's a black man. That's a black I man. I told right her there. you gotta see it. I told her. I said, "This is what I said." I said, "I think the Lord has been sending me a series of messages, and I was picking up because I was I was divorced like six months. So I wasn't trying to get nobody. The Lord had been sending me messages. He said when first asked me to edit the paper, and I just dismissed her with her little project." Uh, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, and I think the Lord had said, you know what, I just need to go home. Lord, just show him the booty. He'll figure everything else out later. <laughs> I just, I just, I know. I just, just show him the booty. He'll figure well, it out. Hey, man, I got to go. I'm, I ain't, I ain't going to keep fooling with you, boy. You I told me. her you wore the right pair of black pants to church that day. I said, you didn't have, that, you said, you didn't have a preacher robe on that day. I said, if you had that preacher robe, 
we wouldn't be married 20 years in April. I said, yeah, so you, but you, had, said, you, so all, you had to so all these church <laughs> sisters out there who who still single, you need to wear the right pair of pants on the right <laughs> Bible study. On the right side. Hey, boy, I hit you later. I'm out, boy. All right, Bill. <laughs> what is wrong with you?